I want to share with you uh, a, a statistic that came out some time ago, spoke of financial Ill- illiteracy among employees of a company, of companies. Um, one of the great challenges that, that, employ- that employers have with their people is that subject I just mentioned, is financial illiteracy. In other words, you pay your people well. Um, if you don't pay them well, not telling you how to, how to run your company, but you know, try and pay what market rates are, maybe even above market rate. But you know, for the industry you're in, for the qualifications your people have, and for the work that they do, pay them fairly. Um, or maybe you ought not be in business if you can't afford to pay people what they should be paid. Okay, let's just, so let's say that they're still, but they're, but they're paid well. We've had this in our own uh, company <clears throat> where we've had some employees where we, we do pay quite well. We pay actually above industry average by about 15%. That said, we've had some folks who, man, no matter how much they make, they're broke. They're just broke. They don't understand how to invest. They don't save enough maybe for investing or for just having a a rainy day fund. Um, They sometimes have just habits or expensive situations that that they don't have to have. Um, And as a result, they have empty food cupboards. Now, this is a real deal. This is a real deal. So uh, at this recording, we have one employee in particular who I hired um, several months ago. an otherwise pretty good employee, does pretty good work, his customers like him, uh, has some attendance issues, we work through those, um, but he's always broke, always broke. And we pay very well for the work that is done. Now, very well is what? It's a relative term, I get that, compared to what? For our industry, and I've been in business now for 11 years, I've had many employees over the years, uh, and they've all been paid well, and they've all had decent lifestyles. They've been able to pay their bills and take vacations and whatnot. Okay. That said, this individual um, does have some expensive habits. I'm just going to say these. I'm, I'm going to tell you what they are without giving his name out of respect and privacy uh, ish, uh, reasons. Um, and, and I'm not casting judgment on these habits I'm going to share with you. But he is single. He is 29. He shares an apartment with a roommate, so the rent is low, and it's not in a high rent district. It's in a low to modest uh, rent area. His utilities are very, very low because it's only a two-bedroom small apartment. Um, he makes roughly, <coughs> roughly sixty thousand dollars, fifty-five thousand dollars a year. Uh, so his portion of the rent is roughly seven hundred dollars per month. His utilities are roughly $150 per month. These are conversations that we have had. But the dude makes $50,000 plus per year. He doesn't have a car because each car he buys, well, he has a car, but it's a beat-up car that doesn't run. That's kind of what he buys um, because that's all he says he can afford. But he averages over $4,000 per month across the 12-month period. A lot more in the summertime, less in the wintertime, but across 12 months, well over $4,000, $4,500 a month before taxes. And we are in Alaska, which has no state income tax. And in Alaska, where we have the permanent fund dividend, BFD, which is anywhere from <coughs> $800 to $3,000 per year. Um, it, it's expensive to live here, true. But when you're single, making $50,000 per year, with $1,000 a month, if that, between rent and utilities, no wife, no kids, no car payment, you can live extremely well. This young man, however, smokes cigarettes in Alaska at this recording are anywhere from eight to $11 per pack. He smokes at least one pack per day by his own admission. He also is a recreational use of marijuana. It's legal in this state. I still hired him. It doesn't affect his job. He doesn't come in high. He does control it. It's at night and on the weekends, but it's every single evening. And that's expensive. I don't do drugs. I don't do marijuana, but you know, that stuff's not free and it certainly is not cheap. He drinks a lot of Red Bulls and they're expensive or energy drinks. 
Now, I'm just saying that be, that because of these sorts of habits, if you will, or other things that he spends his money on, he's constantly broke. And twice he's come to us saying, can I borrow some money? And the answer, of course, is no. You have to manage your own money. I pay you well for what you do. You then have to take what you earn and manage it well. Otherwise, it'll never stop. So financial literacy is the point of this video. No matter how well you pay people, they may have financial illiteracy to the, in, the, in the sense that they'll never get ahead. They're always broke. So that's a big issue. So what we're starting to do now is have sort of volunteer financial education discussions in a non-judgmental way. And the reason I'm saying this is I value my employees. And if you value your employees, you want them to do well on the job and in life in general. Because a happy employee who is managing his or her finances properly, or I shouldn't say properly, it's, that's a relative term and by whose definition. I'm not going to judge whether it's proper or not. Well, let's just say managing his or her finances well, um, and appropriately we'll say, then they're happier people when they come to work. They're less pressured from without, from outside, and they come to work able, I think, to function better, to focus better, and so on. And if the, and if the work environment is such that they are happy when they come to work and they enjoy the work that they do, and they have some more financial peace at home, they're less stressed, therefore perhaps will have less reason to call in sick because they're, you know, stress can create illness, can make you sick or have migraine headaches, those sorts of things. So I think it's a good idea for small businesses to look at that, look at your employees. And um, you may not have to identify a specific person. I mean, we have, and that's what's driven me to this point and the point of this video. But you just make it, a, say, a once per week or once per month uh, if you have a training room or an area where you can have your employees come in and sit down for, say, an hour uh, and pay them, pay them their hourly rate. If they're on, if they're on the clock, if their salary is different, of course, but you know, pay them and give them some education. You may even do a little survey and ask, you know, what is it about financial management of your personal finances that you have questions about or that you'd like help with? Because we're now offering that as a benefit to working for our company. So that now, just in this little monologue here, makes me think about that as, as an idea of, of among the benefits that you offer. Maybe you're not setting up a 401k program. Maybe you haven't got the, the, the structure for that. <clears throat> Maybe you do. But even if you do, a financial literacy education session once per month is among the benefits that you give your employees. No charge to them. And they get paid to attend. Wow, that's kind of nice. Cost you a little bit. I get that. But what does it cost you um, in terms of missed work by employees who can't come in because they're sick? Or maybe lesser because of the stress they're under, perhaps. Uh, or maybe less quality work or less happy employees because they're under so much financial stress. Now, even if you give them financial literacy training, they may still manage the money you know, uh, inappropriately and may, they ne may never get past it. But that's not on you. You've done your part. But I think that also can engender a certain amount of employee loyalty when they know that you care about them enough to help them that way. Sort of like teaching the guy to fish versus giving him fish, right? If you're teaching your people um, ways of managing their money, uh, and even if it's not a regular curriculum, but they're asking questions and you're helping you're help answer those questions during these sessions. But if you're doing that for them, they may have a greater sense of loyalty to you because they're not going to get that most any, probably not anywhere else, right? <laughs> Likely that they might go to work. So they have a, a job that they like. They have a boss that cares, that pays them market rate or more, and that helps them on their own financial understanding and helping them learn how to manage, helping them learn how to manage their money. It's a great deal. It's a great combination, I think, of things that will help you have employees that might, might be, maybe not, we'll see might be happier, might be more content, and might stay longer because <laughs> so, turnover is expensive. Well, hope this gives you something to think about as a small business owner. 
That was the point of this video. And if you offer that kind of service for your employees, let us know in the comments down below if you have. Has it worked for you? Has it benefited you any? Has it benefited not just you, but your employees where you've seen improvements in them? Because others who see those comments may benefit from them. And it's not just me. It's you also helping our viewers. Thank you so much. Please like, share, subscribe, do all those great things. And I, and I will see you in the next video.